How's it going, y'all? Got a really interesting build today for everybody. We have an STS gravel killer frame here. Um, this is handmade in Indiana, in Rushville, Indiana. And uh, that's kind of what was interesting to me about this company was they were so close to home here and where I live in Indiana. So, and I thought it'd be interesting if we had somebody from STS here for the build video. Um, I got Elton here. Hey, what up guys? <laughs> How you doing? And then we're also doing something a little different with the build. We're, we're going with Campanola on this one. I've... <laughs> The reason I have this group set is one, it's fun to try stuff. Um, two, a local lady who um, rides with us a lot at one time asked me if I had ever worked on Campy before. And I said, yes, I've worked on it, but like not that often. And she then was, she was joking around, but she was like, well, I guess I'll just take my bike to a different store. And so I was like, dang it, I gotta figure out this Italian stuff now. So now I got all this Italian stuff that we're gonna put on a, a US frame, a little weird, but it's gonna be cool at the end of it. All right, getting ready for the bike stand here. I got a Bontrager RSL seat post. Um, we sell Trek, so it's just an easy choice to use their stuff. All right, we got the bike in the stand now. And um, I just wanna point out that, so this is uh, the frames made in Rushville. We got a Cane Creek 110 headset, which I, I requested that. Um, do you guys still do requests like that? If you kind of a customer who wants like, okay. I've had several since you have requested that same. I, I think it fits the bike well, man, because it's it's such a like nice looking like steel frame. Like it's hard for me to put a cheapo part on it. You know what I mean? And then this is a whiskey uh, fork that they painted to match. Um, and they um, also would do, they have a stock paint color that they have on their website. You can see it, it's white. Um, but um, if you want to do something different, you can you just have to talk to them about it. Um, and Jesse, while you're on the uh, while you're on the front of the bike there, if you zoom in or take a look at our logo, the STS logo, that's actually a bird's eye view of the uh, the high the roads that intersect Rush County. So it's just a little homage to to where we're from. Oh, so. <laughs> I actually didn't. That we're curious. I did not know that. That's actually really cool. It, yeah, no, I, that's I I like that even better now. <laughs> I just thought it was a cool design. Also requested to have uh, the mounts for a bag here. I usually use a frame or a top tube bag, so it is easy for them to drill that in there. Um, and then this bike is pretty aggressively positioned. So I have 30 mil stack or 30 mil of spacers here. Um, and then I have um, a 100 mil Bontrager carbon stem. Um, it's it is it is it is a very uh, race focused bike, and I think that's kind of cool that it's uh, you can really get low on it if you want. So I uh, already pre cut this before we started filming. <laughs> nice parts work really cool, and then um, trying to think about what I want to put on the bike next, and. I think I'm just gonna go go for it and we're gonna put the handlebar on. So this um, this campy group set actually came off another bike. I thought I was gonna race cyclocross this year and then um, all the races, the local races kind of got canceled and there's still a couple but kind of lost interest and so I ended up selling the cross bike that I had this on and it's gonna be better used on this bike anyway I think. Triple X. Bond Traeger handlebar and it's a 44 millimeter, or sorry, not 44 centimeter wide. 44 millimeter, that'd be, that'd be a problem. Heck yeah, that'd be small. <laughs> Trying to decide how the cables should be run so that they look the best. I wanna undo the brake hose so we can see it before we make a decision. All right, so we got cables run like this. And I think, oh, you guys already decided for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming the bigger hole is for the brake hose. Right? Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. So there is no decision making. You're locked into place here. No, no freedom allowed.
and we are going to do some fishing here. My fault. And then, okay, right now I have the derailleur. What's that like kids game where you're like a doctor? Operation. Yeah, I always feel like I do that all day long. That's from my era, yeah. Jesse. Those games, I don't think. Those are timeless though. Yeah, what I'm doing is just trying to pull the cable through the hole without losing it into the frame, which is not the easiest thing to do. And I, I, I had it, you know, like I had it right there and I didn't get it. And now we have to start over. There it is. Get a shot of that so you can see what I'm doing. So the, the cable's there and I'm trying to just grab it and pull it through. Ah. And now that I have that, it's easy. And then I'm, while we're upside down here, we might as well just keep it going. This is actually my favorite thing about this frame is I love the way that you guys did the, um, cable brackets i think it just looks really cool and um a lot of people just like I, I know the zip tie ones in the end you want to have like that but i do like these ones a lot there we go and the next one's not gonna be as fun because i don't have a cable sticking through but i do love fishing cables through i I always try to do it like whenever I like fish cables through, I'm always like doing it in the most obtuse way like, just to like, cause I'm like, oh, I'm not going to use the, the, the cable guides. I'm just going to push it through and catch it. And then I'll sit here and mess with it for like an hour. <laughs> Look at how lucky I was. Look at that. That is just spot on stupid, dumb luck. The dumbest dumb luck ever. Let's see if I can execute on it. Come on. Okay. So Jesse, sometimes you have to be like a surgeon, right? It's like so close. Man, it's right there. Ta-da. <laughs> it's long enough, okay, everything's fine. That's probably the hardest thing we have to do. <laughs> well, actually, bleeding the brakes might be challenging just because I don't know what I'm doing. The cool thing about the bicycle station, your shop, is that for an STS retailer, people can order the frame or frame set only, and you will you will build it out for them, correct? Yeah, and I prefer that. That, that to me, makes sense if you want to order a bike. I think it just makes sense to have either just buy the one that you guys sell or let me build something that you want and that makes sense to me. Yeah. And uh, it looks pretty clean. Nothing's actually going on with the baby. We're good. So I got the, the brake calipers here and um, we're gonna learn about how to bleed campy. So it's actually Magura. It's a Magura brake system. This might be too long. I can't remember. I don't know if I tested these bolts out or not. Yeah, it's way too long. Okay. 
You know, I agree with you, Jesse. Having just come back from the Belgian waffle ride in Traverse City a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> um, there were a lot. There was a lot of talk about the Iceman cometh. Yeah. Barry Roubaix. Yeah, I've never done that one. Did anybody talk about the Monon while you were up there? Or the Moran 166, I think. Yes. Yeah, I almost yes. went, Elton. I almost yeah. was there. The, the race I was going to go to um, in North Carolina got canceled because of the hurricane. Okay. And okay. so my backup was maybe going to that Moran race, but it was, it was, it's like a week notice on a big trip yeah. like that. It was, yeah. hard to, it was hard to like really get yeah. through. So Jesse, for those that are not familiar with the Iceman Cometh, um, are there trails like that here in Indiana that will properly help you get trained for a race like that, man? Yeah, yeah, it's it's such an easy... So nothing real technical about it. No, and I wrote it yesterday, kind of thinking this exact thing, what you just asked is um, kind of getting used to rolling at that speed because it's not the same as like normal mountain bike trails. Um, Cause it's basically a free reign just to go 20 miles an hour. <laughs> uh, what's your expectation for yourself? Is there a placement? Is there a time um, goal that you have? Uh, I would like to be in the top 25. I've been in the low 40s uh, twice now, and I feel like I'm ready to see if I can crack that next like echelon of the race. So you had uh, mentioned in our outdoor discussion with STS that it is your goal to ride down every road in Indiana. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty, uh, that's some pretty big goals, brother. I can tell you how far I have to go. And how far do you have to go? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, have you been to Rushville yet? No. Okay, so I rank eighth right now in Indiana and I've done uh, oh, wow. 3,500 miles. When did you start this journey? This year? Well, it counts everything ever. So ever. like it, you can, you, you don't have to like start, like you could just get an account with this and it'll go back and take everything from Strava that you've already ever done and just oh, like okay. add it in there. Wow. I love this thing. So the blue is where I've been and you can see like, here is mid South, um, 2022 right there. This was 2020. Yeah. Um, which you'll be doing 2023. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Here's Leadville. Oh shit. Yeah. Here's, so, here's Iceman. We did a beautiful ride up there and back. That was awesome. I would love to explore this Brookville a little bit more. So, um, here's Columbus and the red is where I need to ride. Okay. <laughs> the gravel killer has a, a pretty aggressive geometry for a gravel bike. So, more like a road bike. It definitely is. It, and it is our gravel race bike, so. Yeah, so, and, and I, I kind of like how it's not it's not holding back, you know? Like, it, you're like, it's a race bike, and then it's like, whoa, you're right, it is a race bike. Yeah. And so, I kind of appreciate that. Because you can always, you, it's, I mean, you, it's not on, it's not like a TT bike, you know what I mean? But it's definitely racy, and I think that's cool. We'll see if I, what, what ends up happening, but I definitely wanted to start off without it being too low. Yeah, so like this cable, so this this is the derailleur, and I think this is a really interesting derailleur. Um, the cable kind of has a track through here, and then it cinches down right there, has like a clear place it's supposed to be. One really cool feature about this derailleur is that it's got a um, little pin that you can use to get your wheel in easier to hold the derailleur out of the way, and you just press the button to push it back down. So wow. They, they, that, I really like this. That, uh, that Italian... Ingenuity. Yeah, they thought about it. Let's do something easy. So Jesse, one of our ambassadors, Philip Beal, also um, won the lottery to attend Mid South. Um, you've ridden it before. That race is really, really interesting. Um, just historically, so I think that 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 race happened the day that COVID shut, like that the world shut down. So like, oh, so like this would be like March of 2020. 20 March of 2020. Yeah. The exact day, like the everything stopped, everything closed. You know, like oh, all the shut down and uh -huh. everything. That was the day Mid South happened. 
but there was no like rules about it. And so what, what a lot of people I think felt was kind of, um, like, Hey, we know we're doing something that's not probably good, but we're already all here and we're going to get it done and then we're going to get the hell out of town. We did the whole event and, um, this was before the masks and everything. So it was just like full, full free for all. And, um, I mean, we didn't get sick. I don't know if anybody did. Or... Right. Man, that was a strange time. Yeah. That really was. But in that race too. So that race was 100 miles of peanut butter. Like ridiculous. So this will be your third year. Yes. In a row. And it should have been my fourth year because, um, the one that got canceled, um, I did get into that one. Um, the 2021 race that they canceled because they didn't have one in 2021. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. There's an interesting story. So I was on that purple bike, the All City. Not, not, I'm not saying that that frame isn't nice, but that was all I could afford. <laughs> um, like, I wanted a Diverge, you know? Like, I wanted a nice carbon race bike, but um, I couldn't afford it. And I had just bought a new mount, race mountain bike. It was, it, it, it's actually in right now, like I'm built, kind of building it up for the third time. Um, that bike's always been a bike that gets torn down after the event's over because uh, the event's over and I don't, I need to like return the parts to whoever, <laughs> like, with, like, you know what I mean? So right now that's another build that I got going, which is to put the all city back together and permanently. And so it can just be a bike yeah. instead of just being this like, um, kind of crazy, like last minute, like put it together really quick to go do a gravel event. Kind of just push it in. Oh, wow. And then um, the other side has a retaining clip that I don't know where it is. Yeah, I have another one I'll show you in a second. Um, anyway, then the other side goes in and this is where it's a, it's a hearth joint. So you can see that this splines here and then there's threads on this side and then it bolts in from the other side to connect it. So let's put this one in and we wanna kinda, you can put this on like totally wrong. So that's why we gotta. Looks straight to me. Cool. I'm leaving the brake mystery for last. <laughs> so this clip is like a safety clip and it clips into the bottom bracket. Um, right there. There we go. And so that just is now holding the bearing on the inside. So it's just like a little safety clip there. I think we just gotta do the bearing. All right, so I, I, like I said, I've never done a campy brake lead before. Um, it should be not a big deal. I have the, the bleed kit here. I mean, do you anticipate it being much different than uh, anything else you've worked with? No, I don't. Okay. It is Italian though, know, so, you know. Could be really weird. <laughs> this is where like you get used to this stuff. So clearly this one with the short mm -hmm. probably goes up here. And then the long hose probably goes on the bottom. I could be wrong, but that's just kind of the way that- I think that makes sense. It looks like, it looks right. Yeah. What I'm kind of thinking we do, Elton, is um, I'm not even gonna look at any instructions. We're just gonna see if it works. <laughs> wow. The wizard. <laughs> L let's put it this way. If this doesn't work, then we'll look at the instructions. <laughs> Say that is the way it goes. In. Gotta roll up my sleeves for this this one here. So one thing that we we our, our biggest struggle as parents is that we. Um, seem to not be able to get the temperature right. Um, she's always, well, she's not ever cold is what we learned, but like it's cold outside. So we have like all the blankets and stuff. And then we'll put her in the car with like the AC, like the warm, this is what the, the doctors told us to do too, is to be worried about the cold. Yeah. And so, um, but she's just always sweaty. 
And that's where like I've had to be like, okay, no more blankets. <laughs> you doing okay? <laughs> Here, you can figure out how to do that. I'm gonna go get some milk. Yeah, but yeah. The thing about the baby is I didn't have good context on how fragile or not fragile it was. Elton was just, we were talking about Elton's uh, daughter uh, and how he was nervous about how fragile, um, who he didn't know at yeah. first. When, and I didn't know at first either. And so it's funny, the, because I, I never really, I never hold other people's kids. It's just not something I really like doing. <laughs> I just like don't like doing it. And yeah, it's yeah, okay. yeah. People, people hold her and it's fine. Um, but that's where like, at first I was like, how fra like I was like, like how careful do we need to be with this thing we don't nobody's really taught me or told me i've never really held a baby before and then it's kind of funny like oh actually she's like really strong and like i mean you don't want to throw a baby around but the the like fear of like holding a baby it's like the baby is not going to fall apart in your arms oh like, yeah just holding it. it's totally fine i was so nervous dude but Okay, you're coming over here and bleeding the brake with me now. But you're doing great and... You're okay. You okay? Hmm? Since Jesse does not read Italian, he is doing this just by instinct. The fluid wasn't going through and I'm pretty sure it's because um, this isn't open. Yeah, there we go. Do you see the red, do you see the red fluid coming out now? I do. So, what I just did is I opened up the system. So that is the the closing point and fluid should push through now. So this kind of, it reminds me of SRAM's break a little bit. Hey, now we got fluid going through. Everything's good. See all the air coming out? Oh yeah. Just so everybody's clear, the blue fluid and the red fluid are the same thing. It is, okay. Yeah. So it's not like a blue pill, red pill <laughs> matrix. No, it, well right now it is. We do have blue and red in the system. Um, campy colors there, branded uh, fluid red. Mm -hmm. um, but all we have is Magura stuff. And then I think is gonna work out here is I'll take this top one off, close the system up top. Oh my God. <laughs> Making a mess too. That's my fault. Because we have the ability to close the system on the bottom there. Um, so we, we now have it closed up top and then we can push fluid through at the bottom. Let's not push all the air in there. So now I can push fluid back into it. Take that wrench and close the So I just pressurized it. At least I hope so. I hope we're doing it right. We don't know. We, we really don't have a clue if this is even, but I, I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. Yeah, <laughs> we did it. Right on. It's like way too on. Okay, we're gonna find some different bolts. All right. These are not even close. Problem, they just, don't, they just aren't the authentic Italian oh. ones that we really wanted on there. We're gonna have to order some Italian oh. ones. So that, you know. <laughs> well, this is definitely going to, going to be a multicultural bike. Yeah, it, it is. Hoosier it's, made. It's a blend of, of uh, Hoosier and um, I don't even know what, I, what I'm, what I'm going to say. <laughs> it does it, it does stress me out that we're using those bolts. I don't like when I don't like when stuff isn't matching.
But yeah, that is the right size. So now I just yeah. need to order the right size bolts from uh, from Campy, and we'll be good to go. Jesse, that's so cool. The attention, the detail that you command and prefer, because no one will no one will see those bolts. But it's you know it's your knowledge, and it you'd rather have it uh, all uniform. It's got to match. Yeah. Yeah. No, and that's totally like. I commend you for that. <laughs> There's no real, like, there's nothing wrong with it right now. It's just, it's, I, like, every time I ride the bike, I'll think about it. Like, oh, man, <laughs> that, folks, is called obsessive compulsive <laughs> disorder. Yeah. Like, you know what, we just did, like, a total Wild West, no-looking brake bleed. Yeah. But I actually care about the bolts, like, immensely. It's funny, like, why, why am I, like, I don't know. It's that non-stop feeling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My turn so <laughs> You do too? What what kind of music do you jam to, man? We're starting a whole conversation. Is that good or bad? No, it's good. So like um because I so I'm twenty eight and I used to be a big music head, kinda like on like all on all the new stuff and like I knew everything and like Me I, have too. A, I have a big record collection, um actually. It's your holy grail, man. Like um, what the is the coolest record I have I feel like all of my stuff that I thought was like super graily is like no longer graily because they repressed it. I have a lot of Animal Collective um, like rarities. I have like a very big Animal Collective collection. Love Animal Collective. Yeah, so I have like for a while there, I basically had everything they'd ever released on okay. vinyl. One thing I have, I'm just thinking now, I have the um, Into the Wild soundtrack. Great movie. Yeah. That is great. <laughs> Fantastic book, John Krakauer. These are the wheels we're gonna put on it. Um, Campy Jamal, what I say? I don't know if that's spelled right or, or if I'm saying that right. Carbon. Um, this is one of the weirdest wheel sets I've ever. I've ridden this wheel set once or twice, and the the most striking thing about it is just how smooth it it just like rolls forever, like no resistance. Um, wow. It's cup and cone, and so it's got like a preload ring right there the bike's almost silent like it, it's really cool um, this one is a little bit narrow it's a 21 internal but um the bike doesn't really i'm never gonna put big tires on this bike this is a n3w cassette and it's just it's just different its own puzzle piece that it goes together so see how this one's notched out and that's notched out you just put it there Or you try to and then this is the other side of it and the the lock ring is part of the the last four cogs um, and this is a 13 speed cassette ah We're yeah breaking the sound barrier for no doubt amount of gears on this bike there we go and i have this i needed a campy lock ring tool for this uh uh whenever i bought this drivetrain so i got one of those crazy silka 3d printed titanium just weird it's so like feel how light that is super light wow <laughs> and so i want to show this stuff i talked about this earlier the derailleur kind of kicking back and out of the way like that mm -hmm. and then you can just kind of get your wheel in there without it getting in the way i, I like i said i requested this color I, I remember you guys were um slightly um I don't want to say nervous, but you were unsure because of you guys were still kind of figuring out the matte paints. Um, We've got it dialed in, by the way. I think you'll be super pleased. Well, the, oh, very yeah, resilient. It's, it's, it's here, and it's <laughs> like I've been handling it, and it's like great. Yes. So you yeah. guys, you, it is figured out now. But whenever I asked for it, they were like, "Oh, whoa." Oh. It's because it's it's very different for me too. This is not a paint job that I'm used to having. I, Usually don't even go for matte anything because it's mm -hmm. harder to take care of. But I just I just loved it, and so I was like, okay, I got to do that matte. And um, well, the campy good. stuff just goes really nicely with the aesthetic of it. I had the campy group set kind of available already, um, so like I said, I was gonna race cross and then decided not to race cross. Hence why my cassette is a cross cassette. That rotor's a little bent. Oh, good enough. 
The one thing that's really dramatic with the Campy is the brake. How it, so, Jesse? It just slams. It feels so good. The modulation, I think, on these Campy brakes are better than any other drawbar brake out here. It, it has like a springiness to it. It makes you feel like you're really like braking. Like, it's, it's fun to brake. It's looking like a bike. All right, so now we got all this. Let's start getting the cockpit finalized. Thirteen speeds. There we go. Fire. So what I do is I make a cut that's too long. I know this is too long and that's fine. Okay. And then let's see how I did. I mean, that's way too, well, unless I wanted the bar tape to go all the way up there, but I, I don't want it to go all the way up there. Right. So we're going to cut it again. I mean, that's pretty much what I was wanting to do there. We want it to, we want to glue on the bottom. We are five centimeters from the edge, so we want to try to be as close to that as we can on the other side too, so it looks even. Definitely. Jesse, I must say, I mean, this is looking <laughs> pretty clean, man. <laughs> the bar tape. Looks awesome. It awesome. really does. Everything just has come together really nicely. Yeah, I think we did it. Heck yeah. Boy, it's right there. Yeah, so it's it about is. 20 pounds. Yeah. It's like, for some reason, like, every bike manufacturer weighs their bike without, like, pedals. And I'm like, you gotta put pedals on it. You wanna take it for a spin? Yeah, let's go outside. It's light. No, that's what I'm saying. Feels really solid. Man. <laughs> I like that a lot. Did you notice the brakes? I mean, just wow. <laughs> <Awesome. laughs> so this is a. Uh, this turned out super, <laughs> super good looking. It's. Uh, I love the. It's almost like fall color kind of vibe to it. Thanks to Elton for coming out and <laughs> helping me film this video. Um, he's not just here to hang out, he's been filming and doing a good job. It rides smooth. <laughs> smooth is the word for this bike. It, yes. It, just kind of, it was kind of gliding along is the way I feel. Dude, you're crazy for this one. I mean, this <laughs> is, Jesse, it's guys <laughs> like you at the bicycle station that make, uh, make what we do so special uh, for you to combine um, Italian oh. components with an Indian made steel frame bike, the gravel killer. 
Jesse, you're crazy for this one. Bro. I love it. I love it. It's Italian. Oh, so. Very Italian. Oh, very here. Italian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you better cue uh, the, uh, the Godfather theme yeah. for this one. But, uh, I mean, just looking at it, it's hard not to love how it turned out. Guys, come check Jesse out at the bicycle station. You can have... Heck, this is for sale. Yeah, it could I don't be. Know if buy it. I'll sell it if somebody wants it. I can. I can always get a different one. So yeah, definitely check out our website. Um, I'll have links to their website and ours below. Um, check it out. Uh, hit us up if you guys are interested in any bike-related thing. This was a fun video to make. Uh, thanks to Elton for coming and hanging out. Um, we'll see you guys in the next one.